One of the biggest challenges for beginner singers is learning how to sing on key, learning how to sing on pitch. And some of you watching this video might think that you are tone deaf because maybe you've been singing some songs and you just feel like no matter what you're doing, you can't hit the right notes. Or maybe you've even tried some vocal exercises, but you still feel like you're either way off or maybe just slightly off. I got you. Today, I wanna to share with you three very, very simple vocal exercises that can help you train your ear and also help you finally sing on key so you can sing the songs that you've always wanted to do. And these are exercises that I use with students from all around the world. And don't worry, we're not gonna go for these generic mum, 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 these kind of generic exercises because if they worked, you wouldn't be here. So let me share with you these three exercises and I'll explain why they work and how you can use them to sing on key. Let's go. So the first exercise is a bit of a quirky one. I want you to practice listening to different instruments playing the exact same note. I want you to listen to different instruments playing the exact same note. What is the purpose of this exercise? Why is Ivan trying to get you to do this? Now, the reason why is, have you ever wondered why, you know, a guitar or a piano, you know, when they're playing the exact same melody, they sound kind of different. Why do they sound different? A big reason behind this is beyond the actual pitch of what the instrument is playing, there's a lot of other things that are happening. An example of this is just the tone of the instrument. You know, a guitar might have this more kind of metallic kind of sound. Maybe a piano has like more like a gentle kind of hollow tone to it. A tone is also a big part of what we hear with our human ears. And so what I found for a lot of students, the challenge is being able to pick them apart. Right? Because sometimes when we're trying to match pitch, our brain is listening to the pitch, but it's also picking up all these other different cues. And frankly, it gets confused. And so this is where exercise number one comes in. Because if I play the exact same note, but I just have different instruments playing that note, we start to give our brain some really cool information. And our brain's really good at breaking down and understanding patterns. And it's gonna to start to disassociate pitch with all the other parts of the sound you're hearing, the tone, or some of you might call it timbre, it starts to disassociate them. So let's jump into an example and I'll show you how you can apply this to your own voice. So this is a virtual piano. Uh, and the cool part about this virtual piano, as you can see, it allows us to play 128 different musical instruments, which is really cool. Now, what we want to do here, we're going to play the exact same note, and then we want to switch it to different types of instruments. And you can try with different notes, of course, our goal here is can we hear the difference? Can you hear and observe the difference? So step one is, say for example, if I chose this G, ah, this is what it sounds like on an acoustic grand piano. But what if I you know, chose an electric piano instead? Something slightly different. Do you notice how they sound different but similar at the same time? This is what I want you to practice observing because what's similar is the pitch. You know, I'm literally pressing the same button, but something is different. And the more you can start exposing yourself to all these different types of sounds, this is a vibraphone, still the same note, but just slightly different. Let's try maybe a, a harmonica, very kind of different sound. They're all the same pitch, but then if you can start to practice hearing that they are different, it's gonna help you improve your hearing because you're gonna start to disassociate pitch with tone. Now a bonus step to here is you can also try matching the exact same note on different instruments. For example, if I start on the piano again, if I feel like, hey, I can get onto that pitch really nicely, great. Can I now try to match that exact same note on marimba? So regardless of the instrument, as long as they're playing that note, my voice can match that. So this is exercise number one. So the first part is see if you can play the exact same note on different instruments and just practice hearing like what is different? What is different? Because I know the pitch has to be the same. What is different? And the more you can do it, the more your brain really picks up that pattern. And the second part is then you want to see if you can match that note regardless 
of the instrument that you've got. So hopefully this first exercise is already giving you some value. Just wanted to pause this episode and introduce myself to some of you who may not have met me. My name is Ivan. I'm a voice teacher who's worked with students from all around the world. And really on this channel, my goal is to make learning how to sing as simple as possible. And so if that is up your lane, consider subscribing and also check out some of the links in the description below. I've got ways on how you can work with me more privately and to actually take your singing to the next level. Exercise number two to improve your pitch is see if you can sing the exact same note, but at three different volumes, soft, medium, and loud. And the reason why this is important is it's actually quite similar to the first exercise, but this time we're trying to break apart the association that our brain has of pitch and volume. They're not the same, they're not the same thing. We wanna really break that apart for our brain. And the association could really depend on how you grew up listening to music. Some of you might think that, okay, a louder, bigger sound tends to be a higher pitch, or could actually maybe feel like a lower pitch as well. A lot of us tend to clump volume and pitch in the same thing. And so here is a very simple exercise. What if once again, I just chose a note, I'm just gonna choose a very simple pitch, similar to exercise number one, and, and I'm gonna try to sing it soft, medium, loud. Uh, uh, uh. Soft, middle, loud. You can even use the words if you need it. Soft, medium, loud. See if you can find those three different dynamics. Now, this is a great exercise because if you can't sing those three notes and be on the exact same pitch, this is definitely one that you wanna spend some time on and see if you can get it. Because what's that's gonna force you to do, just by simply being able to sing that exact same note on three different volumes, is gonna train your ear to hear that, okay, pitch and volume don't have to go together. You can kind of isolate them. And then also you start to train your vocal folds to do the right thing as well, which is have the control to close tightly or close gently as well. And this is a really phenomenal skill, especially when we talk about singing high notes. And so practice, you know, soft, medium, loud, go around the piano, soft, medium, loud. You can kind of go and dance around all the different parts of the piano, but see if you can build the skill on a very comfortable note. Now, final exercise, exercise number three is practice your upper range in falsetto. Now, the reason why is for a lot of us, especially some of us who are trying to challenge those higher, crazy high songs, and we want to sing it strong, we want to sing it belty, a lot of us are often going to fall flat. You'll notice that, you know, you're trying to hit the note, but you can't get there. You're always kind of a bit under the pitch. Now, that's not because you can't hear the pitch. Like you can hear it fine. And it's not necessarily because you can't match the pitch, but rather that note is hard for you at the moment. It's a bit outside of your range. And so one of the ways we can start to develop those notes and also improve your pitch in that area is you wanna hit it in a falsetto where we tend to back off a lot of the pressure, a lot of the compression, and we're just purely hitting it as a pitch. And so if I choose a note, notice instead of going, Ooh, instead of kind of really squeeze my way up there, I'm just really focusing on just hitting the pitch dead center. This is going to be a great place to start for those high notes because not only are we improving our pitch in that area, but the second part of hitting a lot of notes in falsetto is it starts to engage the muscles that really nicely stretch the chords, really, really nicely stretches the chords. And eventually, you know, if we wanna lean in, get a bit stronger, we can always do that, but you wanna make sure you start here. Team, that wraps up our episode for today. Hopefully you found this episode on pitch valuable. If you did, all I ask is please share this channel, please share this podcast with a friend or family. It really means the world to me. Now, I do wanna leave you all with a bit of motivation to wrap up today's episode. And today's motivation actually comes from a student of mine, Justin, who has recently just finished rocking out with me for the past six months. And Justin said this, Ivan, uh, you've been incredible and have seriously taught me so much more about singing than I could have hoped for. I now have an understanding of the how and why and not just winging it. And this is so important because a lot of us kind of see singing as this kind of mysterious thing. Like, how does it work? Like, why, why is it like this? But when we can break it down to very simple principles, it becomes a lot, lot easier to understand, to train and then to use when you're singing your favorite songs. And so singing isn't this mysterious gift. It is something that can be deconstructed and it can be broken down to very bite-sized advice. And so hopefully this inspires you. Hopefully this inspires you to keep going, to keep becoming better. And you know, if you need some help with this, I'm always gonna be here for you. You can check out some of the links in the description on how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one or some of my self-study programs. Apart from that team, thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you for our next episode 
every Thursday, Friday, depending where you are joining me from. Take care.